Uh, well, congrats on, Thank you on the show. Much. Season one was great. I'm a huge fan. And then I heard you guys were on season two. We did. Were you anticipating at all when you had this in mind, the reception that it has gotten? I mean, you guys no, got the BAFTA nomination, a Golden Globe nomination, Satellite. I mean, Very gratifying. I was expecting that it would work in certain countries with certain audiences. I had no idea the scope of its success. I had no idea that, particularly in Colombia, where we've been shooting season two, that it would have that season one would have landed so so well with them because that's their story. I was always very concerned that they would we would watch it and think oh well, or not watch it. Think why would they make a why would those Americans come down here and make a our story? And they got so much wrong, and, and in, in reality, it, it was it was the other way around. They, were, they loved it, and they embraced it, and, and it's played big all over the world. It was something of a surprise. Now you you've done a lot of, um, especially produced a lot of like horror films I and horror stuff. You did yeah. Hemlock for, for yes, Netflix. Yes, I did do that. Um, but at the same time, like I said, how different was this? Because it just seems so out of that. I mean, kind of because I mean Pablo himself, the way Wagner portrays him, yeah. can be very scary very at times. You know. The, like a number of films that I've made, the ones I'm particularly proud of, it was something that I lived with for a long time before I actually was able to get it made. I, I started developing it almost 20 years ago as a as a film about the drug war with elements of Escobar and the Cali cartel, and, and it sort of morphed over the years into a you know now 20 hour Escobar story, and and ideally the going forward we'll tackle some of the other you know known quantities in the narcotics business because there are a lot of them. You know, the reality is that once Escobar was gone, somebody else took his place right away. You know, and cocaine continues on. Now um, on the on the awards front, because we are at an Emmy event for Narcos, yes. um, how did you find out about the Globe nomination? Were you expecting anything no, like that at all? I, uh, you know, I was hoping, expecting and hoping that Wagner would be recognized for his outstanding work as Escobar. Um, you know, the awards thing is a, is a strange, as you know, a very strange process, and you never, you know, it's slightly arbitrary. Some things are elevated to, you know, award status, while other, you know, incredible shows aren't. You know, for example, you know, The Wire is one of the greatest history shows in the history of television, and it never, I don't think it won a single award. the greatest snubs. Yeah, so, so, you know, I think it's, it, you know, if, if you allow yourself to, your mind to go there, you know, you, you would be forgetting some of the great shows that were acknowledged. But but it is nice because I do feel like we did something very different here. You know, we did something sort of amazing. You know, we went to Colombia and told a story, you know, half in Spanish, and you know, and and pulled it off. And that in itself is you know, well, that was, enough. That's what I was going to ask. Is I mean, that's quite a. Um, quite a uh, show of, of guts that, you know, instead of doing the, the show in English, I mean, it's oh, no, it like 70% in Spanish. We, and, from the beginning, we were always planning on doing a, a Spanish language, you know, a, a bilingual show. And Netflix, to their credit, said, go for it. That's incredible because it's still, even with the subtitles, it's still so engaging. You know, sometimes when you, read, you have to read on screen all the time, you kind of lose it. But so subtitles were, you know, risky because the way that audiences nowadays watch television is with their phone in their hand and they're texting and you can't do that with our show because you'll, you'll miss it. And so I think that it created a different kind of, you know, very in, it required a certain level of engagement to watch the show and not drift off into the other things. So I'm proud of that, that not only that people hung with it and did that, but also that they, uh, that they were, that they still enjoyed the show even after engaging that closely and paying that level of attention. But did you feel, with the second season having just wrapped, did you guys feel any kind of pressure at all? Because season one was so well received. We, yes, but I, I chose to look at it in a very specific way.
way, which is by the time season one came out, we were already shooting season two. And at that point, it would have been impossible to make some huge course correction. You know, we had always envisioned this particular chapter of the story as, you know, the rise of Escobar and the fall of Escobar. So we, we were pretty clear about what we wanted to do, and it was not influenced by the success. It, it did bring an element of pressure to us, thinking that, well, a lot of people are going to be watching this. And I still feel that now, as I finish the season, I look at, you know, the, the episodes that we've made for 10, for season 2, and I'm very happy with them, but I know that people are really going to be you know, salivating by the time it comes out. So, a certain amount of, you know, I hope we don't let our audience down, but I don't think we will. Well, if it's anything like season one, there'll be no letdown. I think so, it's, I think it's, congrats on the success.